Did you know that the color of your USB cables makes a difference when you charge your phone? Phone chargers are just so confusing. This is the fastest phone charger on the market. Charging a depleted battery from 1% to 100% in just 11 minutes. Uh, there's only one problem. It's absolute bullshit. So let's get some answers on what we all really want, to charge our phones in the quickest and safest possible way. So I bought a USB testing kit and I reached out to Niels from learn to diy to get electrical info so we can shed some light on what's really going on. When it comes to phone charging, there are three components. So let's start with the phone itself. The first thing you need to do is look up if your phone supports fast charging. If it doesn't, there's really no reason to spend any money on expensive fast chargers as this is simply not gonna do anything for you. I use a website called GSM Arena, but of course you can look up the specs for your phone on the company's own website. Now under the battery section, I can see that the Google Pixel 7 Pro supports PD 3.0, which is USB powered delivery. That means fast charging. If you have the iPhone 14 Max Pro as an example, it supports power delivery, but this time it's PD 2.0. Now to be clear, PD 3.0 is not faster than PD 2.0. Both deliver the exact same power. The difference is that PD 3.0 actually allows for various messaging to be exchanged between the charger and the phone. Now, if you look up your phone and it says something like QC 2.0 or QC 3.0 and or any other later version of that, that also means fast charging, which is Qualcomm's quick charge. Okay, so now you know that your phone does support fast charging. The next thing we want to check out is what is the maximum power that your phone can draw. So back to the website we go. I see that the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 45 watt max power draw and the Google Pixel 7 Pro has a 23 watt power draw and the iPhone, well, uh, of course the iPhone doesn't reveal that for some reason. Apple just has this super useful graphic to check out. But your phone really doesn't care that I have a 45 or a 65 watt charger. The phone will regulate the power to its own maximum. It doesn't just blindly accept as much power as you can throw at it. So no, getting a 65 watt charger doesn't mean that you will charge your phone ridiculously fast over an 18 watt charger. Okay, but why does your phone sometimes charge really, really quickly and other times charges slowly if you're using the exact same charger? Well, that has got to do more with when you charge your phone and no, I'm not talking about the time of day. Phone manufacturers have divided up the charging process into two stages. There is a fast charging stage and a trickle charging stage. Most phone manufacturers allow for super duper quick charging up until the battery is at 50%. And that happens typically around 30 minutes, but of course varies based on the size of the battery. Once the phone reaches 50%, it then changes from fast charging to trickle charging up until the phone is at 100%. Now to add to the confusion, this 50% isn't a rule. So once again, head back over to GSM Marina and check your own phone. We can see that the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra charges up to 65% in 30 minutes. Whilst the Pixel 7 Pro charges up to 50% in 30 minutes and so does the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So that is why your phone seems to charge quickly when you're nearly out of juice, but then looks like it takes forever to get to 100%. We spoke about the phone's capability. Now we have to look at the second element, which is of course the charger itself. If you look at any charger you buy, you should be able to see all this gobbledygook written on it in Arial font minus 15 for some reason with a bunch of symbols on it. You only really need to be worried about a couple of things here. So firstly let's look for the UL symbol. Now basically that means that the product has been vetted by the underwriters laboratories which test products to make sure they comply with the Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA. Now you may see CE instead of the UL, which basically means the manufacturer confirms that the product meets the applicable European conformatory directive. Uh, basically what these organizations do is test and make sure that these products are safe. Next up, you'll see a house symbol. Now a house symbol basically means that the charger is meant for indoor use. So don't leave your charger outside next to your barbecue and certainly don't use it in extreme weather conditions. 
Now this double squared thing, well that symbol basically means that the charger is double insulated, which is meant to minimize the risk of electric shock. That's a good thing. Now beyond the pretty pictures, you wanna look out for a tiny word called output. And next to it, it should have something like 5V. Now 5V basically means it's five volts. Anything below five volts, stay away from. It's probably ancient and probably unsafe. Now next to that output, you're gonna see a number next to an A, which is the amps. When you multiply the volts times the number of amps, you're gonna get the maximum power, which is what? When you're looking to buy a charger or use the fastest charger that you have laying around, do this little maths and find the one that's closest match to the maximum power wattage that your phone can draw. Now a laptop charger may be 20 volts and 3.5 amps, which equates to 70 watts. But don't worry, you can still use that to charge your phone by and large, because remember earlier we said that the phone will regulate how much power it can draw. But we're not done yet. We spoke about the phone, we spoke about the charger. The third element that we need to talk about is the cable itself. And yes, that makes a difference too. Both of these are USB cables, but if you look inside, one is blue, and one is black. And that actually makes a difference. It's not just to look pretty. The black one is USB 2.0 and the blue one is USB 3.0. USB 3.0 not only handles faster data speeds, but can also handle higher wattage when charging. Okay, enough theory, let's go to the practical. Here I have a phone that is 72%, it's my Google Pixel 7 Pro, and here I have a phone that's basically dead, virtually no battery whatsoever. So without further ado, let's begin with the testing. So here I have my power adapter, here I have my normal fast charger, my tester, which obviously doesn't go in the first time the right way around, and of course I will have a summary graphics all at the end, so you don't have to stress too much about these figures, but you can see this has got five 5.128 volts. So the first test we're gonna do is we're gonna use the black cable, that's USB 2.0. I'm gonna plug that into my tester and we're gonna use the Pixel 7, that's the one with the 72% battery. You wanna keep your eye out on the amps and you can see 1.0 amps is now being shown on the tester. Faster it charges. And again, a graphic will be at the end. Next up, let's use the Baloo USB 3.0 USB-A being charged with a charger. We're gonna stick it into my Pixel 7 Pro. That's the one with the 72% battery. Let's see what that's gonna give us. 1.45 amps. See how much higher that is than when I use the USB 2 cable. And let's unplug the Pixel phone and let's put the TCL phone, the one with less than 10% battery, and we're gonna see what kind of amperage we're gonna see on this tester. And now we have 1.9, and here it is. And the big takeaway here is, regardless whether your phone is full or empty, if you use the blue USB 3.0 cable, you are gonna get more amps, and that's gonna get you a faster charge over using the black cable, which is USB 2.0. Okay, next up. Now we're gonna test the USB-C capabilities of this fast charger. Now I am gonna use an adapter, and I wanna show you the difference when you use a USB-A cable going into USB-C charger. So let's begin with the black cable again. We're gonna plug that into the tester, and we're gonna plug it into the Pixel 7 Pro with the 72% battery. And we're gonna keep an eye on the amps again and see what that's gonna come out at. 1.2, 1.225, 1.27 amps, fine. Now let's unplug that and let's plug into the TSCL phone, which is the one with the dead battery, and see what that comes out as. At the end, to summarize it all, we are now gonna test the blue cable. That's USB 3.0 coming out of a port of a USB-C port, charging the Pixel 7 Pro, and that's the one with a 72% battery, and you can see 1.3, 1.4 amps, and it kind of fluctuates around 1.2, goes back up 1.4, somewhere around there. So we unplug that, and now we're gonna plug in the TCL phone again, that's the one with the almost dead battery, and we're gonna see what that comes out as, 
Let's see, are we gonna get 1.9 again? Yes, we are. So if you have a choice between using the USB-A port on a charger or USB-C, choose USB-C, and it doesn't matter whether you have a black cable or a blue cable. Okay, what about testing USB-C port on a charger and using a USB-C cable? Let's test that. What I have to do is I have to plug in a USB-C cable into the charger, then a USB-C cable into the tester, into the in, and another USB-C cable into the out, and then into the phone. Unplug that and now let's plug that into the TCL phone, the one with the almost dead battery and we're going to see what kind of amps we're going to draw this time. And once again as it boots up 0.5 and then 1.9 exactly as before using the USB-C cables. So to summarize, when you use a USB-C charger and a USB-C cable, you're really going to make a big difference over the USB-A, getting at 1.7 amps on a full, almost full phone, and then a 1.9 when the phone is almost empty. Another common way to charge a phone is from your laptop. But what happens then? And the tester goes straight into my USB-A port on my laptop, and we're going to get the normal 5 volts that we would normally expect. Let's test the USB black cable, USB 2.0. I'm going to fast forward this bit because you've seen how it works. Plug it into my 7 pixel, 72% battery. I'm getting 0.88 amps, nice and steady, but lower than when plugging into the electrical outlet. Let's unplug that. Let's plug in the TCL phone with their almost dead battery, and we can see 0.53. So that seems to be lower than when you plug it into the power outlet. What about if we change it over to using the blue cable, that's the USB 3.0, it's higher on plugging into the 72% phone at 0.74, and then let's unplug that and let's plug in the almost dead phone, and we're getting actually a lower amount, 0.46 amps, when we use the blue cable using the USB-A port on the laptop. Okay, what about USB-C charging from a laptop? Well, let's turn this laptop around. And again, we're gonna hook up the USB-C cable into my Pixel 7 Pro. What are we gonna get this time? We're gonna get 1.3 on the amps. And when we plug in the almost dead phone, if we give it a little bit of time as it does its normal boot up process, we're gonna get 1.9 amps. And the summary, here we go. So once again, it's clear. If you're using a laptop to charge your device and you have a USB-C port, and a USB-C cable, you're gonna get a better performance and faster charging than if you're using the USB-A. USB-C is still much, much better. So knowing what we know now, let's have a look at the super duper fast chargers that promised a full charge on 11 minutes and see how it compares to a regular fast charger. Is it any better? Okay, here's the scabby charger. It's got color codes for green, which is supposed to be slower than the orange. Plugged in my tester, and let's use the black cable, and we plug it into the Pixel phone, and we're gonna get 1.2, 1.3. Okay, let's move it down from the fast orange port to the other port, which is the green one, and we're getting 1.2, 1.1. Let's plug in the TCL phone, the one with the almost dead battery, and we're gonna see 1.9 on the fast port, the orange. What will the other port supposedly be a slower port? Also 1.9. And to be fair, let's use the blue cable as well, just so we're comparing apples with apples and see what we have going on here. We have the Pixel using the orange port, the fast port, at 1.3 amps. And if we move it down to the supposedly slower port, what do we have? We have 1.1. 0.95, 1.1 again, 1.3. So let's plug in the phone that's almost dead on the super fast port, 1.9, and on the other port, supposed to be slower, what's that gonna give us? 1.9. At best, this is a fast charger. I will have some links to some chargers down in the description which are pretty good and you can check them out because this whole thing can get very confusing. And speaking of confusing tech, check out this video and make sure you don't buy a wireless security camera or check out this video right over here that YouTube thinks you would love. Hit the head down here to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up before you head out. And I'll see you in this video or this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.